Get serious. <laughs> I told y'all, <laughs> I'm not in a hurry. I want to make sure we get something. Amen. I'm life changing word. I mean, know that God's word is life changing. I'm gonna bring you up a little early too, friend. Cause I, I want you to. I want to be Batman and you be my Robin. A little early. Okay. Amen. Uh, so we uh, we've talked about how we need to migrate, and even in nature, all of God's creation has a reset button and knows when, according to the seasons, when to migrate. Mm -hmm. Only the church don't know how to move and migrate with God. Amen? Amen. Only the church. That's why I'm trying to help us reset and relocate so we can discover our destiny and our purpose, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And it's imperative that we get to that point because change is imminent. Change is coming upon all of us. It's, I can look at my physical body and see change. You can look at your physical body and see change. Change is all in your house. Yes. Change is all around you. Yes. The fragrance of change. Yes. The, 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 the aura of change mm -hmm. is upon us, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to get to that point to understand it's okay. We need to know how to participate with change because we understand that we can't keep the old system, the old mindsets, the old perceptions, the inclinations that we had in times past. We must, what? Migrate. Migrate. We must transition. We must change. Amen? Amen. So, uh, last week, did we get it? Is it, is it on? Yes! Thank you! I want to give you a hug, but we don't care. Thank you. That's a lot of time. Bring them notes. Bring them notes. Okay, I'm going to do something real funny here, y'all. You know, I'm not the atypical. Right. <laughs> That's okay, y'all. I'm still saying. So we, we, we had a chance to look. Nah, I'm just kidding. Pick this up. I don't want nobody to back, so I... Say it and sanctify. That's it. All right, last week, we began to look into... Uh, we, we looked at a prophetic lens of sort, mm -hmm. and we were embarking on looking at the father of our faith. His name is who? Abraham. 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 Abraham is an important part of all of us. How, how many know Abraham is the father of our faith? Sir. Tell you Abraham. Abraham. Abraham is the father, is the father of, our faith. of our faith. That's right. That's right. That's right. God used him as a prototype. We looked uh, last week, we saw uh, that he called him out of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Chaldee is the ancient name. The Ur of Chaldees. They did like the sophisticated the book of <laughs> Acts 7. They want to put up the Ur of Chaldees. Okay. And the Ur just means the life of Chaldees. So he was in Babylon. The, you know, Babylon is the, speaks of confusion. Mm -hmm. Babylon. Babel on, same thing, you know, like the church. You know, we'll leave that alone. We'll digress from there. But he was a moon worshiper. And so God is not uh, afraid of incorrect worship. I mean, God intervened and, you know, and brought Abraham or had intentions of bringing Abraham into his destiny and purpose. But the original mandate was not given to who? Abraham. It was given to who? His daddy. I ain't gonna let y'all mess that. I'm talk, just talking to myself. Terah. Right? And we looked at Genesis 11 and we seen the whole process of how the word came to Terah. <coughs> Terah died. We said Terah was what? Wonder. To wonder. To get off course. So somewhere he fulfilled his destiny by getting off course. And then God decided to deal with his seed mm -hmm. and to bring him into his inheritance, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And his name is Abram, or Abraham. His name again, <coughs> originally was the Abra Abraham, and then you'll find out later on uh, he became Abraham. So I'm just going to use his redemptive name. And so, you know, off the top. So we're talking about Abraham. Mm -hmm. And uh, Abraham was being brought out of some things. Let's go to Genesis 12. He was being brought out from some things. How many know we're the seed of Abraham? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. 
somewhere in your Bible, in, I think Galatians third chapter, it talks about, you know, that he's he's uh, that we're the seed of Abraham, mm -hmm. and that the promise that God gave to Abraham, we're going to look at, wasn't just given to Abraham, but it was given to his seed, and his seed became many seeds. Yeah. I, I don't, I know it's not uh, Wednesday, so I don't want to get too analytical. I just want to try. I want to keep it as uh, solving as possible. We gotta, you know, dilute it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So he said, "Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country." This is the mandate Terah had his dad. Get thee out of thy country and from where? Thy kindred and from where? From thy father's house. What what happened after that? Unto a land that I will show you. Powerful. That, that, that portion, a land that I will show you. Most of the church is still looking for that land. You know, we still focus on a literal land. Mm -hmm. But it's a prophetic picture. I, I don't have time to show you, you know, through scriptures that the land that was once an ancient territory and a part of the terra firma is no longer what we seek. In fact, in the book of Hebrews, what we'll see, he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. Yes, that had yes, foundations of building right God. So we're not looking for, or he wasn't, prophetically, he was looking for geographic area, but mm -hmm. to us, historically, but to us prophetically, we're looking for a promised land. And a promised land became a man. But mm -hmm. well, let me, okay. Get thee out of thy country and thy kindred for thy father's house and unto a land that I will show you. So God had expectations. I want to show you something. That's, that's what Moffat translated. He said, hey, Abraham. I want to show you something. All right? I got an assignment for you I want to show you. And he said in verse 2, And I will make thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be what? Blessed. Most of the church like the blessing and the cursing because, you know, somewhere down the line in the 90s, they told us, you know, the Abrahamic bless, blessing was that, you know, you're Mr. Good and Tuesday and anybody that messes with you, God going to curse them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what the message to us? We have uh, misapplied that particular part. The key is that God wanted to use Abraham as a prototype to bless all the family. Mm -hmm. All the nations. So he didn't want to have a certain level of spiritual experience confined, you know what I'm saying? To just a, 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 a natural nation. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just for Abraham and his family. But God's going to use his life as a prototype. Yep. As an example. Mm -hmm. And that as a, a part of the Gentile nations, what people say, <laughs> The people that are not a part of who he was in his uh, genetics. His genetics was he was a Hebrew, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we can talk about that he was a Hebrew, but, you know, a river crosser. Mm -hmm. But the point is that God wanted to use Abraham to bless all the nations of the earth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when I look in scriptures... I want to see what was his process before he became a blessing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. How many know there's always a process before the blessing? Yes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. There's always a season of preparation. Because mm -hmm. promotion does not come without preparation. Mm -hmm. I know you got tight in your seat right mm -hmm. when I said that. <laughs> yeah. But the point is, y'all, yeah. we need to be able to look at it. And I took the time to share with you guys that... Uh, some of the things when I looked at uh, Abraham, and go to Hebrews 11, if we're going to get to a point to understand what these seven separations speaks of. Because last time we were here, I told you that God wants us to uh, do some things in the, as it relates to spiritual things in our destiny, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's look at it. Now God called him out, gave him the four things so he can be a blessing. But look at chapter uh 11 verse 8. It says, but by faith, Abraham, when he when called to go to a place, remember he, it was a land he wanted to show him, right? Mm -hmm. It's a land that he wanted to show him. And in that land, he's going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. right. 
And his blessing won't be confined to his generation. His blessing is going to exceed his generation. Even so much that it's going to be, humanity is going to be blessed. So I can't neutralize his life, but it is a prototype for me to look into. And there are principles in it. Now look at the verse, uh, we had eight, it said, By faith Abraham, when he called, when called to go to a place, he would what? Later receive as his inheritance. Mm -hmm. What did he do? Think about it? Fast about it? Cry about it? Complain about it? <laughs> no, what did he do? He obeyed. he obeyed. And he went, right? Mm -hmm. And he went even though he didn't know where he was going. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So he jumped off the ledge. Whoa! Oh, yeah, <laughs> Into your hands, God. I commit my spirit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He, he, he followed the, the, the cadence of the Lord. He had an encounter. The word of the Lord came to him, and he was able to go out or go after what God has called him to do, the land that he was going to show him. He didn't get full disclosure. He said, there's a land that I will show you. And the revelation of that land is predicated upon his response. So he obeyed the promptings of the Lord, and he went without full disclosure. Because you got to understand, great faith does not come out of great effort, but out of great surrender. So he had to surrender. When you are responding to what the Spirit of God is telling you in any season, it's based on your surrender. Mm -hmm. Only in America, we got to have full disclosure. We want to know everything. <laughs> yeah. What did the pastor mean by what he said? Yeah. 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 We need A, B, C, D, and all the way to Z. Yeah. But then we eliminate faith. Mm -hmm. Faith says, I don't have to know everything. Mm -hmm. So he went out not knowing where he was going. He didn't have a GPS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he had no... <laughs> Amen. So he had no external witness. All he needed to go on is what the Father had spoke to his spirit. 